I'm gonna share with you what I consider to be almost the secret to increasing the power in your swing, whilst also improving the rhythm, the timing, the flow, and the overall feel of your goal swing. This is such a key move. There is certain things that lead and certain things that lag. So if we've got the top of my club, which is the grip, and we've got the bottom, which is the club head, for me to have this club moving with rhythm and flow, the grip is leading, the club head is following. And when they change direction, they don't change direction like this because that wouldn't have as much flow or rhythm. The grip will change direction first, the club head will follow, and then the same thing will happen in this transition. When I do that, it feels like it's perfectly timed, it feels like there's a great rhythm there, and it feels effortless and smooth. That's what should be happening in your goal swing. So when we look at the downswing sequence, what do we see? Well, the lower body leads the upper body, the upper body leads the arms, and the hands lead the golf club. That's what the great players do. I want to talk to you specifically today about the upper body and your arms. I'm gonna do a little demonstration in a minute, which I'd love you to do, but let's take a look at Tiger. I want you to show Tiger's transition. And what you can see is that there's almost a, a phase at the end of his golf thing where his shoulders stop turning back they begin moving towards the target or begin their downswing phase as the arms continue moving away from the golf ball. They're continuing their backswing movement. So what we can sort of say there is in transition, Tiger's shoulders are moving sort of almost back towards the target when his left arm is actually going more into his chest. So try this for me. I have got half a tennis ball. You don't have to use this, but this is just gonna give us a really good visual for this. I've just taken a tennis ball and cut it in half. And if I just took my normal setup, I'm just gonna place that tennis ball just here on my left chest, and I'm gonna put my hand down as if I've got a golf club. If I drop the tennis ball, it's gonna to fall to the floor, okay? There's nothing there to hold it. But watch what happens if I take my lead arm and I move that lead arm across my chest. Well, when I let go of the tennis ball now, it's held in place because my lead arm has gone you know, across my chest, it's holding it there. So what we can sort of say is that in Tiger's transition, he is moving that lead arm across the chest, which would hold that tennis ball in place. Now, I've done lots of videos fairly recently talking about how the arm should be moving down this way in the downswing. Okay, this is key. This is the move that precedes that. So don't want to get confused. Once the arms go into the chest, then they need to accelerate down as I've discussed in some videos, but I'm talking in this one about the rhythm and the timing. So here's what happens in Tiger's golf swing. He's gonna make his backswing move. His lower body is going to lead his upper body. Then his upper body is going to lead and his arms are going to get squeezed into his chest, as you can see here. That would be me squeezing that tennis ball. And then the hands lead the club head. And when he does that, he gets this beautiful sequence of events. And obviously he's got one of the best goal swings out there. So what's the key move? What's the secret move? Well, let me show you. Tennis ball's here. If I let go, it drops, okay? When do we want that lead arm to go across and squeeze the tennis ball? In transition. This is the lag that we need. So what we're gonna do is as we go back, if I go here, drop the tennis ball, it drops. My arm hasn't gone across my chest yet. So what Tiger will do is he will basically keep this relationship very similar very similar, if I was to drop the tennis ball, it still falls to the ground, but then as he starts his downswing, that follows. We get that sequence of events where his shoulders begin to go towards the target, his arm goes across his body, and he squeezes that tennis ball. So it would look something like this. And that's what creates the flow and the rhythm. So many golfers that I've worked with recently and, and over the years don't have that sequence. They have a very different sequence. They have what I call the frozen shoulder. So when they take a setup to the golf ball, this shoulder doesn't move. And when that shoulder doesn't move, where is our focus? Club head, hands. What are we trying to do with the club? We're trying to get that club up and around our body. So what happens is we focus on the club, the shoulder doesn't move. What have the arms done? They've gone across my body. So if I put that tennis ball in place, and I make that poor move where the shoulder doesn't rotate and the arms go, I've got the tennis ball held, I've squeezed that tennis ball. So my arms have moved across my body 
early in the backswing. So what it means is that when I get to my transition, I can't have that movement. I can't have that sequence of events where the arms get sort of left behind and we start with the body and the arms get squeezed into the chest because they happen too early. Okay, so if I show you from here, that close up, you're gonna see as, as my arms go, tennis ball is squeezed, then my shoulders turn, but I've got no room, I've got no lag that I can tap into. So what happens now is we have to start, we have to apply the power with the hands and arms and that tennis ball drops. So the poor move that I see all too often is arm squeezes the tennis ball early, drops the tennis ball early. What I would love you to do is squeeze that tennis ball late and hold it and drop it post impact. Now I appreciate that's quite a difficult little drill to do because you've kind of got to hold it in place, but I would love you to do that. Try and get something, it could be a tee peg, it could be something small, it could be a golf glove. Place it here, left on the side of your chest. In fact, I'll show you as a, as a close up. So here, okay? And I'm gonna rotate my shoulders. Notice how my arm isn't going across, but as I transition, then I squeeze it. Then as I accelerate my arms, it would drop target side of the ball. That's the move I want you to practice. The one I want you to avoid is the one where the arms go across early, hold that tennis ball. Then the arms would accelerate too early, drop the tennis ball. Okay, that's the poor sequence. So here's another little drill that I'd love you to try, which is gonna help you do that. Because when we see the great players do this, it's all in the takeaway. It's all in how they move away from the golf ball. It's all a case of getting the shoulders to move and keeping some width early on. If you lose that width early on, it's incredibly difficult to recover from that. This is just, some rubber tubing, you can get this anywhere. It doesn't have to have handles on it. In fact, it's probably better if it doesn't have handles on it. But I want you to basically hold one end with the golf club, and that's gonna be, well, clearly for me a little tricky, okay? You can't take your normal grip, but you can get pretty close. Okay, and you're gonna stand on it, okay? And I want to stand on it so that it is pretty, Okay, so there's a little bit of slack in it, but not too much, okay? So what I want to try and do in my takeaway is feel like I put as much tension in this band as I can, okay? So how would I put as much tension in that band as I can? Well, basically I need to stretch it as far away from that lead foot. So watch what happens if I do that kind of frozen shoulder, arms go across, okay? Yeah, there's a little bit of tension there, but not a huge amount. This is the really poor move, which leads to, say, lack of power, lack of flow. I can feel a little bit of tension in that band, but not much versus that's a very, very different feeling for me. I really feel like I'm stretching that band away. And how am I doing that? Well, I'm turning my shoulders and I'm keeping that width early on in my goal scene. Look at my arm structure. Look at my trail arm. There's a little bit of bend there, a little bit of flex, but it's wired. Okay, my arm has not gone across my chest yet. This is the key move. And I can really sort of feel the difference between those two movements. That feels weak, it feels narrow, it doesn't feel like I'm putting any tension on the band, versus this. Okay, have a look at Rory in that takeaway, what are you gonna see? This, right arm pretty straight, right arm on top, lots of width, the arms have yet to move across the body. Once we've got this wide move here, now we can start to sequence, and we can start to get that perfect sort of body, Sorry, legs lead body, body leads arms, arms lead club. And if you can do that, if you start to get that sequence of events, you tap into power that previously wasn't there. It's natural power because it's done through physics, it's done through sequencing. And you also get what I said at the start, you get the rhythm, you get the timing, you get the flow, you get the feels that you want, which is a smooth golf swing, an effortless golf swing. It doesn't feel rushed, it doesn't feel over too quick, all those kind of horrible feelings that so many of you will be experiencing. So how do you then take it through to a golfing? Well, very simply, you do those little exercises, you kind of get an idea of what you're trying to do, and then you go ahead and repeat it. This is the key move right from takeaway. I've got to get this width, I've got to stop this shoulder freezing and these arms going, because from here I'm narrow, then I'm gonna turn, I've got nowhere to go. So how do we do it? We go wide, and then we start with the lower body, and everything else should follow.